Hello, my name is Steven. Welcome to HiFinder Tech Talks, where we aim to understand the technology that is behind the hydrogen economy. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome a special guest. He's an expert in laser welding, in heat exchangers, and has been working in this industry for many years. He currently works at SMK, a leading manufacturer in heat exchangers. And it's my particular pleasure to welcome Stefan Flugfelder today. Hi, Stephen. Hi, welcome. Stefan. Hi, guys. Good to Great have to be you here. here. Today. Yeah. Stefan, it's uh, nice that you came, but yep. it's also great that you brought something with you. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. is this, please? Uh, it's a heat exchanger, uh, especially for um, SOFC uh, applications. This means um, it works at very high temperatures. This is specific for SOFC technology. Um, SOFC technology uh, in itself, I'm very convinced of this technology because mm -hmm. it um, enables the um, uh, to create power um, out of hydrogen at a very uh, high efficiency. Mm -hmm. It's uh, over 60% uh, efficiency is possible and this is uh, outstanding uh, compared to other technologies like PEM and okay. so on. Yeah. Thank you. I think we need to take a step back there a little bit and say okay, yeah. SOFC. So yeah. um, we have different kinds of fuel cell systems. Yes. Maybe you can just help us here. So we have the PEM ones and yes. then we have the SFC ones. Yes, we yes. have alkaline. Yes. There are uh, different uh, systems, uh, but the special um, technology uh, which we are talking today is mm -hmm. the SOFC technology, um, which operates at temperatures um, at about 700, 800, 900 degrees Celsius. Yeah. And this uh, means uh, it's, um, yes, uh, you have, uh, you, you need the uh, right materials. Yeah. Um, and and the, the right parts to operate on these high uh, temperatures. Okay, so that's that's what makes this particular heat exchanger special, that it can operate at those high temperatures which yes. are required for yes. SOFC yes. and SOEC? SOEC and as well, yes. yes. What's, yeah. what's the difference between SOFC and uh, SOEC? Yes, the, the core or the stacks are the same, yes. but um, it's a reverse uh, operation. When you want to produce um, uh, electricity, electricity yeah. uh, it's the um, SOFC operation and you, if you want to produce hydrogen, you turn around the, uh, the operation um, and then it uh, is produced when you uh, put um, uh, some current in it, you produce hydrogen okay, on the water. Okay. Yeah. So um, I know we, we talked about this and you brought a diagram which can help us better understand where, yeah. this, where we can actually find this. So I'm just going to move this over and I hope we can get this into the camera. Yes. And, uh, so yeah. uh, which, I think we can see it right we now. We can see, yeah. Uh, which one? Which one is actually on this diagram the the, the heat exchanger which you just saw? Where, where is it? This here and here, and mm -hmm. it's very simplified. Uh, but I want to keep it simple, uh, mm -hmm. not so many numbers or something. In um, I want to point out mm -hmm. that we have a stack. Uh, mm -hmm. which is operating in these very high temperatures. Mm -hmm. this, this yes, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, here you can see the cathode gas, uh, gas uh, going in. Yeah. It's typical hydrogen. hydrogen yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, and uh, No, yeah, sorry, it's on the anode sorry, side, it's yeah. hydrogen. Yeah. On the cathode side, you Getting get the Getting it all gas, mixed up the, here. The, the air here, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Don't worry, I, I got it mixed up as well. Cathode yeah. is uh, air, air, and the anode, anode side, you got the hydrogen. hydrogen. Yes, sure. exactly. Yeah. 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 And here <laughs> is the magic um, which is happening. Uh, you um, the, um, uh, the hydrogen and the air is combining and uh, you get on the other side, uh, you get uh, um, the current out of it yep. and the um, uh, cathode gas on a, on a high temperature is going out mm -hmm. and um, the anode gas as well and it's necessary to get this um, energy which is in the uh, hot gas back to the gases which go back to the SOFC stack. So in this cycle? Yes, basically. in this cycle. And we okay. have two cycles, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, here are the two heat exchangers. Here's the fuel-fuel one, and here's the air-air heat exchanger. Okay. And which one did we see on the table today? It's oh. from the, um, from the volume, one? it's typically a fuel-fuel heat exchanger. Okay, so this is a fuel-fuel heat exchanger. So typically this small one. Which yes, the smaller here. one and the air-air heat exchanger are uh, huger. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we talk about 500 uh, millimeters in uh, mm -hmm. in the lengths, mm -hmm. and um, yes, th they are quite bigger. Okay. Because okay. of the volumes, they are uh, higher volumes mm -hmm. going okay. through this. So uh, one exchange. cycle here, the other cycle there. Yeah. Okay. So, at what temperature does the gas come out of here, and what temperature does it, you know, come it in after it's gone yes, through the heat exchanger? It depends on the on the systems about 700, 800 uh, de uh, degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and do you need anything else to make this work or are you just 
flow the gas through? Do you need to? Yeah, yeah. It's um, when you uh, in the end, it's as simple. Yeah. Uh, but um, if you if you have uh, you need the very high efficiencies, yeah. and uh, the efficiencies have to be about ninety percent. And on the other side, it's necessary that you operate on a very low um, pressure drop. Okay. When you go through these uh, uh, heat exchangers, yeah. because uh, you see here the blowers yeah. in the in the scheme, this scheme, and mm -hmm. uh, the, the blowers one. need um, need um, electrical energy, yes. and this reduces the overall efficiency of the system. Of the entire system. Yes. Okay. And uh, because of this, it's necessary that the pressure drop inside of these heat exchangers is very low. Okay, then let's take a closer look at this, the actual heat exchanger. I think if we put it over here, yeah. then we can see it well. So we saw in the diagram it has inlets and outlets. Yes. Right? So yes. these are these are which one? I mean, they, to me, they all look the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which one is the inlet? Uh, which ones are inlets and which ones are outlets? Uh, important is that it is operated in counter flow. Yes. This means on the one side, um, the, um, the um, volume, the one uh, phase or the one gas gets in, mm -hmm. and on the other side, the other gas gets out. Uh, because of this counter flow operation, it's possible to to um, get high efficiencies within the uh, heat exchangers. So it's, it's, it's the fuel, unused fuel gas comes in where? Here? Yes. Mm -hmm. It goes in here. In the, here? Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the used fuel um, comes out here. here. Okay. And, the, uh, and uh, the temperature of the, of the used uh, fuel, which is on a high level, mm -hmm. um, is, um, is um, switched to the fresh um, cathode uh, gas, which is coming in the, in the, okay, yeah, okay. In the heat exchanger. Um, anode it was, no? yes. because it's, uh, it, this is yeah. the, the small one, the, 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 the anode one. Yep, there's, the, the, the cathode is the, yeah, is the uh, big uh, heat exchanger. Yes, yes. And this or, or the, uh, it's, it's always with the same gas, it's not cathode and anode gas. No, 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 it's no? All, here it's only, only the anode gas. Only, only yes, the anode yes. gas, okay. So, so we have, uh, let me say, from fuel supply, Anode gas going in here and then coming out where? Here or there? Going Com to the stack? Coming in here, yeah. coming out here. Coming out here, then going yes. to the stack. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And in opposite direction, yeah. the, the anode gas, uh, the, coming the, out of the, the fresh stack. one coming, mm. uh, going in and coming out. Okay, exactly. Coming in here. Okay. Mm. And then when it's in there, what actually happens? And I don't know if we can see this. I mean, this is. Is this is this normally like this or is this cut open? Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a sample part for yeah. trade fairs or exhibitions. Yeah. Uh, we want uh, to make it possible to to have a few inside of the of the heat exchanger. Yes. You see these corrugated plates, mm -hmm. and um, here uh, the heat transfer takes place, mm -hmm. and s there are several plates uh, stacked up in, side inside. by side. So side yes. by side inside yes. there. Like in a toaster, basically. Yes, like toast, yes, yes. Like, okay. And so normally it's it's closed like this. Yes. Yeah. It yep. looks like this, and um, yeah, and then and then nobody can actually see. You don't. Ah, you don't even have a sticker on it. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is then now. Th th these you have all these plates in there. Yeah. And how do they hold? Are they welded in yes, place? Yes. Yes. And, and how do you ensure that the two gases yeah. don't mix? Yes. Uh, this is specific. Um, all of these parts which are inside of this heat exchanger um, are laser welded. Yes, and uh, there we talked. Um, uh, when, when you see here, there's a lot of laser welding inside. Yes. Yeah, you see only the the laser welding of the housing here. Inside, there's a lot of more laser welding, and uh, there are. Uh, it depends on the size of the heat exchanger. Here uh, are about um, uh, 30, 40 plates can be uh, stuck here, uh, inside here, and each of these plates. Um, are laser welded before they are tightness tested okay. and then put together in, uh, here in, uh, side by side in the CD exchanger. And um, so there are, there are uh, two different volumes created which don't interfere each other. They mm -hmm. are tightness tested so that no gas from one side uh, can switch to the other okay. side. And when I look at this, how does the gas Flow? Does it go like in a you know like up and down, up and down, up and down, and all the no, way through, or it, no. just, it goes like a? Let me know. No, the the gas is flowing here counterwise. Mm -hmm. On yes. the one direction, it comes from the right to left. On the other side, from left to right. Okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, and so I know you're an expert in, in laser welding. Is there any particular 
kind of laser welding that you need to use here? I mean, also regarding the fact that this is will be exposed to hydrogen and, you know, mm. hydrogen can get really yes. small loops and, and holes. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Um, it's necessary. The, the materials which we, are, which we use here are very thin, yeah? Um, you, it has to be very accurate. When it comes to laser welding, you always have to be accurate. But here, especially, it needs to be very accurate. We use camera systems which are integrated in the laser welding um, operation uh, to, get it, uh, to get it happen that we uh, can um, do this perfect laser welding and everything is tight. Okay, considering your tightness, I mean, I know from putting systems together that you want the heat, but you don't want the, any of the other energy, any of the pressure, for example, that you've managed to build up, get lost. Can you tell us a little bit about the pressure drop that we'll, we experience uh, across yes. this? Um, it depends on the operation point and the volumes which are uh, going through the system. Uh, typically, we, we talk about 5 to 20 millibars, yes, when it comes to... Um, to a um, 100% um, operation point, it comes, uh, it, it can uh, go higher. But we think of very, or we 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 operate at very low levels of pressure. Drop. Okay. And what? Okay. So that's so that's 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 about the pressure. Yeah. And what about the temperature? So, so what's the typical delta T across this? Yeah. When when it when it comes to the to the air, yeah. uh, we we again, enter yeah. we enter at ambient uh, temperature. Yeah, so turn this around again. Yeah, yeah. here. So here we go. And, um, so air coming in here. here yes. At ambient temperature. Ambient, ambient temperature. Which, yeah. And mm -hmm. then it it uh, it's heated up to about seven hundred degrees. Wow, yes. that is yes. so. Yes. That can be yeah. seven hundred degrees. And in so some cases, on the other so. side, you see yeah. you need for sure some uh, uh, delta in temperature when you want to increase this temperature. Temperature on this level, yeah. so on the, um, uh, the the incoming air is needs to be hotter for sure. Yeah. And um, but it's cooled down to I think 150 degrees, 200 degrees Celsius. Yes. Yeah. The, the and it comes in with about 800 degrees. Okay. So you more. do yeah. manage to, to yes. get that much heat yeah, yeah, exchange. Yeah, yeah. It's necessary. Yeah. In, in there. And 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 uh, so do you, is this one enough for let's say one stack, or do you need several of them? Um, it's always that if you have two heat exchangers to operate uh, a stack. Yeah. Um, in some uh, special, it, it's it's the thing of the OEM to define yeah. how many uh, stacks you combine with the heat exchanger. But typically, it's um, it's it's linked to the stack. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. I have a I have a really let me say basic thing. I've always wanted to ask about the heat exchanger. So I know. I mean, we we just you said that this handles temperatures from zero to seven hundred, eight hundred degrees. Mm -hmm. Stefan, now metal expands and contracts yes, yes. when you know you see these deltas yeah, in temperatures, yeah. like, and then you've got all these many, many, many plates, and yes, yeah. you've got you know at some point the system is cold, yeah. and you're trying to get a start. How do you handle that? And I mean, maybe not the first time, but let's say after the five thousandth time. Mm. Yes, uh, you. For sure, in the design, you need um, to to keep in mind the thermo thermomechanical stress. Yes, you have to uh, keep this in mind when you do the, your design of the heat exchanger. And on the other side, um, it's a tie. Uh, it's a um, it's a point of heating up. Yes, the heating up ratios um, uh, are uh, are limited, and um, they have to be kept when you operate such a heat exchanger. But they, this this is a part. So, so you can't hit it too quickly. Yes. You have okay. a, a certain um, degrees of Celsius per minute, yeah, which is can... going up and going oh, down. Okay, okay. But this is um, uh, necessary for the stack as well. Yeah. So you have an uh, operation heating up uh, uh, scheme yeah. and cooling down scheme yeah. as well. I didn't. Uh, I do recall you mentioned earlier that you know you, yeah. you had advocate of the SOFC technology, which clearly has its advantages. I think one of the uh, the other factors that needs to be considered, that, you know, you can't just, let me say, start it and two minutes later it's running. It yeah. takes a while yeah, yeah. To, to get there, obviously, due to this, the temperatures. This leads to the, uh, to the fact that uh, these SOFC uh, applications are typically uh, running a 24-7 um, system, yes. Ah. Uh, it's for stationary, um, full-time running um, operation. Okay, yeah. so... That, that, that gives a good segue into run times and safety. Yeah. What do you do about this to make it run that much and never fail? Yes, um, you're, you're, you have some, um, some aspects are the thickness of the plates which are inside. 
um, um, there are different um, thicknesses in the market. We go to a little more thicker um, plates mm -hmm. um, because this mass makes it much robuster. Mm -hmm. And the, the laser welding um, operation is, um, is a way to join materials in a very um, yes safe way. Yeah, and right. with, for sure, there's a stress in the material, but um, it's the most effective and um, 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 not so... Um, uh, uh, not so, not so much stress in the material when you when you combine it to other uh, welding uh, mm -hmm. op opportunities. Okay, and 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 do you have any tests that you do at the yes. end of the production? Yes, is it every yes. unit that you every, test. Or? Every unit is tested 100%, mm -hmm. yeah. and for sure you have to make a validation. Yeah. Uh, we have some possibilities in house as well. Okay, yeah. okay, so up. To and I know I have this. You know, do you, you also put pressure on this because I mean the. You know, clearly sometimes this, this may be an issue. What, what kind of pressures do you subject this to? Yes, um, this is in a, in a typical way. It's um, it's operated on um, a very low different pressure uh, level. But um, when we when it comes to our testing, uh, it's defined with the OEM. Typically, we yeah. test it at about two hundred uh, millibars. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. So these are these are quite impressive. I mean, I actually, I want to lift it up and say, okay, this is yeah. <laughs> What do we have here? Maybe a lot of metal inside. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Talking maybe eight, eight, nine kilos, something like that. Ten that, kilos, yeah. Ten kilos, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, okay. Very interesting. So um, maybe can you just give us a short insight into like what are the other challenges that you see with you know heat exchangers in generally SOFC systems or, or, or generally? Like why why would one uh, come to you for one like this and maybe not take another? Because we have a very high, uh, as I said initially, we have a very effic high efficiency mm -hmm. at a, le a very low um, different pressure, uh, diff the pressure, pressure top. top yes, yeah. and this um, is, a, is a possibility that we are um, uh, we are very happy about, mm -hmm. and um, we have uh, made it that we have a modular plate design here, mm -hmm. yeah. and we can adapt it um, to the specific needs of our customer when he comes here to the um, access point. Yes, um, this is always uh, customer specific because the um, um, heat exchanger doesn't uh, um, create or uh, gives, the, uh, gives the ports design, yeah. uh, fixes the ports design, but they can be adapted to the needs of the customer. Okay, cool. So knowing that heat exchangers actually what make a lot of difference in, in, in different areas, so yeah. not only fuel cells, but I mean every air conditioner uh, basically has that. Yes, yes. Is there any Outlook on heat exchanges in especially SOFC or SOEC applications. Like, what what does what does the future hold? Are they going to be smaller? Are they going to be out of titanium or anything that's <laughs> it's uh, a, coming? It's a, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, when, when it comes to the use in SOFC application, you always need some special steels mm -hmm. because the atmosphere are uh, typically um, uh, challenging for the materials. Um, so. Uh, austenitic steel, perhaps with the coating on it, uh, will be the uh, will be the point even for the future. And um, um, it's in in my opinion or in our opinion, laser welding is the ideal uh, manufact uh, production uh, possibility because um, um, uh, it's not it's not possible to use some braced uh, heat exchangers or some. It has to be pure steel um, and no additional material. So, so laser welded, not cast, not so everything, you know. Yes, there are different uh, approaches in the in the um, in the market, uh, diffusion bonding and so on. But in our opinion, laser welding is a very solid uh, possibility to do it. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, Stefan, I know that you are an expert in laser welding, <laughs> so <laughs> I think you're a very good ambassador of that. Yeah, yeah. Also, I think we've learned here, uh, all of us, that if you're looking for a delta T from zero to seven hundred degrees, uh, Stefan is the man to go to. <laughs> And uh, yeah, with that, I think uh, we, are, we are happy for today. That is the, the end of uh, our Highfinder Tech Talk to today. Thank you very much for, for watching. If you want to know more about this, find more components like this, go on highfinder.com. You will see this there, and then you can get into contact with people like Stefan um, and you know, people who make these kind of heat exchanges. If you like this video, please drop a comment or subscribe. Also, feel free to say something on our LinkedIn channel or anywhere else, and uh, we'll be very pleased to have you watch another video again sometime soon. Thank you very much for watching. Stephen, thank you very much for the possibility, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.